Hello, everybody. Um, while I'm waiting for people to hop on here, I just wanted to say welcome to another AHA Maker Moments video. Uh, we are so excited about this and the response from the community has been unbelievable. Um, yesterday, I kind of anticipated that we would give away around 30 bags of clay and we gave out 168. So thank you, Telluride. We are feeling the love and I'm so excited to do this with you guys today. Um, on that note, if you are a creative person and you have something that you'd like to share, maybe you're a musician, a baker, maybe you like to crochet, whatever it is, we want to hear from you. And we would love for you to hop on here and do a Maker Moments video with us as well. So if you're interested, email info at aha.org. Oh, is that backwards? <laughs> info at aha.org and please let us know. We can um, get you signed up for a slot and show off your talents to the rest of our wonderful community. Let's see. Without further ado, let's get started. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> You're welcome. I am so psyched that everybody was so excited to do this. Um, it's it's really great and, and AHA is feeling the love. So we love you Telluride. Thank you for participating in this. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tara Carter. I am the Youth Curriculum Manager here at the AHA School. Um, on my spare time, or in my spare time, I also make a lot of ceramics. And I happen to make pinch pots. So if some of you were wondering, like, oh, this is kind of like low brow, I've already made a pinch pot, well, so have I. <laughs> and it's what I'm selling professionally now and getting into some galleries across the country. So it's super exciting. Um, if you'd like to see more of my work, hop on Instagram. My uh, handle is you pinch it, you pot it. So uh, here's an example of what you can do with a pinch pot. Look at this big old pitcher. <laughs> Now we're not going to make something that big today. We only have a small bit of clay, but uh, this just shows you the potential for what you guys can do. Right now I've been doing a bunch of stuff with marbled clay, so I'm adding color into the clay itself. But for you guys with the bags that all of you picked up from us, we don't have any pigment in there. Um, you're welcome, parents. <laughs> all right, without further ado, let's pinch a pot. Uh, so the first thing I'd like all of you guys to do is grab your bag and let's grab your piece of clay. You can see yesterday um, and the day before I already wedged all of these for you. So when you're working with clay, it's really important to wedge. And what that means is you're pushing all of the air out. All of the kids who have taken classes with me can tell you what happens and I'll let them do it. It explodes. Uh, so we don't want to have any air in there. So that's why we've done it that, um, that way. So to get started, all you're going to do is just hit your piece of clay back and forth with your two hands. All the frustrations you're feeling right now, let's take it out on this little ball. <laughs> and the goal is just to hit it back and forth until you have a perfectly round sphere. <clears throat> and if you guys have any questions at any point, feel free to use the comment feature here. I can see all of them coming up and I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. All right, so I've got this piece and it's getting more rounded. <clears throat> so what I want to think about now is pushing this into more of a thick hockey puck shape, okay? So I'm going to use my hand, like if I'm making that motion that someone's talking too much. Is that me? Uh, I'm going to use that on my clay and pinch it until I get more of a hockey puck shape. So you can see I'm using both of my hands. I've got my thumb on the bottom and my four hands on top or my four fingers on top. You can flip it over, do the same thing on both sides, whatever makes it easiest for you to shape and form that into place. With my left hand, because I'm right-handed, so that's what I'm using primarily to pinch. With my left hand, I can use my thumb and just push the walls so that they're more vertical. We don't want any, um, rounded midsections. <laughs> All right. If you're having trouble getting your walls uh, straight up and down vertical, one thing that you can do is use all four fingers, make a flat palm, and you're just going to tap and turn. Oh, yay. Hi, Liz. <laughs> 
this is so cool. I just can't tell you guys enough how much I love the fact that we're all making art today in our own sequestered homes. <laughs> Following the rules doesn't mean we can't still have fun making art. Okay. So this is about the shape that I'm going for before I need to open it up. For those of you who are familiar with pottery, um, it's important to open it up in the center of your piece or else you're gonna have what we call a wonky pot. Some of you may make wonky pots today. That is okay, they are beautiful. I love all pottery of all shapes. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfect. It should just be about having fun getting your hands into the clay. Having said that, for those of you who've read the instructions, we are gonna fire these for you guys. So they're, um, I, I want you to just keep an eye on the weather. We can't put clay out on our porch if it's freezing. So if it's snowing out, maybe hold off on a different day. Um, next week, I'm gonna swing by at four o'clock every day. And any pieces that are on the porch, I'm gonna grab and bring in with my gloves and get them fired for you guys. Okay, so I've got my hockey puck. It's nice and rounded. It's not perfect. You know, it doesn't have to be super flat. I don't know if you guys can see, there's a bit of an impression in there. Same on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is what I call the bobblehead trick. So you're gonna stick your thumb straight up. All of you guys out there do it with me. Are you doing it? Great. I feel like Mr. Rogers, this is like my life goal. <laughs> All right, thumbs up, and you're gonna place that piece of clay directly in the center. So I'm gonna try to show you guys that on the camera. I wanna push my thumb straight into the piece and whatever is comfortable for you, you can hold it up. I like to go from the bottom and push up because it's just easier for me to keep control of it. So again, I'm right in the center. I'm gonna push my thumb into my piece and I don't wanna go all the way through. Having said that, if you do poke a hole in the bottom, it's okay. It could be a beautiful little planter. <laughs> all right, so I'm pushing my thumb down into the center until I feel like I'm getting close to the bottom and I'm using my left hand to push against my thumb to compress the bottom a little bit, okay? So the first step of making any pinch pot is compressing the bottom of your piece. If you're throwing on the wheel, you may have experience with um, applying pressure on the bottom of your piece before you're pulling it up. This is essentially doing the same thing. It's compressing those clay platelets so that we don't have big cracks that come out of the kiln. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like here. Look at me, it's not perfectly in the center. It doesn't have to be. We've got plenty of time to work with this guy. Um, don't beat yourself up, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now, before I get too far along, because I know there are a lot of kids watching too, and I miss all of you guys. I hope that you're having fun at home with your parents. Um, <clears throat> when I'm going in here, or I lost my train of thought, now I've got it. Parents, no matter what your kids tell you, do not bring any water into this party. <laughs> there is plenty of moisture in the clay itself. If you see any cracks that are starting to come, it's really common for the lip at the, at the top to start cracking. If that starts happening, just use your thumb and smooth it out. I promise you, you do not need water. <laughs> Hear my words. If you add water to this, you're gonna have a big mess on your hands and nobody wants that. All right, so I've got my thumb down at the bottom. I have set the base. And now what I'm gonna do is start pinching up the walls. So I like to think about my piece of clay like it is an apartment building or any place that has multiple floors. I want to make sure that I'm pinching all of the first floor before I move up to floor number two, before I move up to floor number three, and so on and so on. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna stick my thumb on the inside, and I'm using my right hand because I'm right-handed, and I'm using my four fingers on the outside. I'm gonna very gently pinch the clay, and I'm staying on that ground floor. I'm not traveling all over. I'm turning that piece as I'm pinching, and when you do that, you should feel that the walls are starting to get um, more consistent. You've got a better shape going on in there. As far as the thickness goes, we're going for about the size of your pinky. That's how thick we want the walls to be. So if you're feeling the clay, and you can use your fingers on the inside, thumb on the outside, you can use both hands. When you're pinching that clay, try and see if you can get a feel 
for how thick that is. Okay, so we're going all the way around the bottom. Again, I'm on the ground floor here, and I wanna pinch that whole level until it gets the thickness that I'm looking for, which again is about the thickness of our pinky, okay? And again, I know your guys' hands are in clay, which makes me so happy, but if you have any questions, please hit on those comments, let me know, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, so I'm spinning this around and I can feel, maybe you can see a little bit down in there, I've got a nice wide opening and I can feel that the walls are more or less the same thickness, that's the goal. So I've done floor one, moving up to floor two. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Just lightly pinching, I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure, just doing light little pinches as I turn my pot. Awesome. One thing that's a real common mistake or a big common mistake that I see when people are pinching is they really wanna apply a bunch of pressure. So they're pinching and then pulling that wall out and all of a sudden you have something that looks more like a plate at the end. <laughs> We want to keep these as tall as we can. Um, it's natural for them to get a little bit wider as we go up, but do what you can to try to angle your hand in towards the center. That's going to help you keep your walls straight up. If I just pinch like my hand naturally wants to, you can see the shape that I'm pinching that wall into. We want to turn that hand, pinch in towards the center. <clears throat> okay, and you can see I'm switching my hands back and forth for me. I just like switching it up because otherwise my hands get a little tired. <laughs> Wedging up 168 bags of clay yesterday, my arms are feeling it. So you might see me switch a little bit more than I, than I typically do. All right, again, I'm staying on level two. I'm pinching and pinching and pinching and turning as I go. If you've ever watched pottery videos for people who work on the wheel, this is kind of the same principle. You don't wanna just pull up on the wall. You're gonna get a big old line in your piece and it'll go off center. If I can keep my pinches at the same level, then that gives me a better shot of having a tall piece with even walls and that's what we're going for. All right, so I feel like I'm good with level two. Now I'm gonna move up to level three. And just to address um, how to know when you move on from one level and you go up to the next, we're looking for that thickness of your pinky, okay? The only way that you can really tell that is by pinching, feeling the clay in between your fingers and your thumb. And after, you know, your hundredth pinch pot, it's really obvious <laughs> when you have that thickness. <clears throat> All right, so I'm moving up to three. Perfect, Let's see if I can get a better angle for you guys. And again, my piece is naturally getting a little bit wider. That happens with pinch pots. The more you handle this piece, the more likely it is to, to mess it up along the way. <laughs> Doesn't mean that we can't bring it back though. That's the best part about clay. All right, so I'll show you. I've got a little bit, it's not necessarily a crack, it's just an area in the clay that wasn't exactly even when I started pinching. Use your finger like an eraser. It's really easy to, to get that stuff out if you don't like it. Having said that, some of my finished pieces, I love the cracks, so I tend to leave them. I think they're beautiful. <laughs> Nothing has to be perfect, then it gets boring to me. All right, so I'm getting pretty close to the top of my wall, and that is as simple as it gets to make a pinch pot. And I, I know I can hear you already. Mine doesn't look like that. <laughs> Just keep working with it, be patient, small little pinches. And honestly, if your pinch pots looked um, you know, exactly like mine, I would I'd probably have a bit of a crisis about that. I've made maybe 2,000 pinch pots, so um, it gets easier every time you do it. And if this is something that you're really interested in, there are tons of websites where you can buy clay and ship it to your house. Bigceramicstore.com is a, is a really great one. Um, they offer free shipping for clay, which is pretty huge considering how heavy it is. So if you like it, maybe consider buying a box of clay and you can make all kinds of pinch pots. We do offer um, a very modest firing fee, so we'd be happy to fire those for you in our kilns. If you decide after this project that you're going to become a pinch potter. <laughs> all right, and as I've been blabbing, I've just been pinching all of my top level and I'm spinning as I go. 
All right, that feels pretty darn good. <laughs> At this point, once you've gone from the bottom of your piece all the way to the top, what I want you to do is just very carefully, not with a lot of pressure, you're really just checking thickness at this point, do little pinches all around your piece. If you feel any areas that are thicker than the others, pinch them. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <clears throat> One thing that I like to do if you're having trouble, if your piece is starting to go out way wider and you wanna bring it back in, think about using your fingers going all the way to the bottom and really applying, applying pressure towards the bottom, towards the outside. That'll help bring the wall back in at an angle, which is exactly what we want. All right, friends, we're getting pretty close. <laughs> Once you've got your piece and it's shaped how you want, and you can fuss with this all day, um, you guys are, are looking at my living room and this is pretty much where I make all of my pottery that I sell online and sell locally in, in a couple different shops. Um, you could do this anywhere. You know, that's the best part about it. I actually do, I've taken clay on the ski resort with me before, which was really fun to get some weird looks. Um, I take them hiking with me. It's a really nice, therapeutic activity where you can just take your mind off of things, which I think all of us could use that right now, huh? <laughs> all right, so here comes my fun cooking show aspect of this little demo. I've got my piece. Once you guys have it in the shape that you want, and again, you can fuss with this for hours. Um, there is plenty of moisture in the clay. You don't need to add any more water to it. If you feel it's starting to dry out, take a wet paper towel, wrap it around your piece, put it back in your plastic bag, and you'll be good as new in a couple hours. Um, again, no water, <laughs> unless you wanna have a huge mess to clean up. All right, so here's my cooking show part. I've already done a pinch pot earlier, and I've been letting it sit out for about an hour. So here we go, magic. <laughs> This one is not, uh, it's not dry by any means. It's still plenty wet, but it has a little bit more stiffness to it than it will when I've first pinched that piece. So after you have your shape the way that you like it, what you can do is take some um, household tools. I, I don't have my clay tools with me because I've, I'm at my house. Oh, thank you, Annie. <laughs> Art does save lives and AHA loves all of you. Um, so I, I went around my house and tried to find some things that I think everybody might have around. <laughs> and you can use these tools to apply some different textures. So the first one I have is a fork. And you know, I can just take those lines down. Maybe I wanna do a bit of a basket weave pattern. You can just carve into the clay to make some marks. Um, Sharpies are really fun. I love the little marks that the bottom of your cap will make. Those are pretty cool. Not to mention a pencil. All of you guys should definitely write your name in the bottom of your piece. So I'm gonna write my favorite place on earth. Aha. <laughs> pencil is a great tool for writing your name on it. Maybe you wanna carve Telluride, maybe you wanna carve some mountains. You can draw into these. Um, waiting until it's a little bit stiffer is better if you want to do some detailed drawings. If you're just looking for texture, it is totally fine to do that when it's still wet. The last little texture tool that I wanted to show you guys that I think everyone probably has lying around their house right now, toilet paper roll. <laughs> so you can use these just to make a generic circle shape and I'm just gently pressing into the clay. Maybe you want to do some smiley faces, um, what is it that's so popular now in our classes? Llama corns. You want to make a llama corn? I'm all for it. Do it. <laughs> but I saw this and thought, you know, that kind of looks like cat eyes to me. So maybe we can turn this little pinch pot into a cat really quickly. Let's see. So I've got my eye shape and I've never done this before, so I hope it goes well. <laughs> but that's the best part about art you know it doesn't have to be perfect it's about the experience it's about taking your mind off of things and getting your hands in clay I mean what could be better than that all right my cat is kind of turning into some scary eyes but that's okay <laughs> let's see so now I'm just gonna take my pencil tool 
and add some eyes. Maybe he's looking off to the side a little bit. He's kind of curious what's going on. Let's give him a nose and maybe a mouth. How about that? And you gotta have whiskers if you're a cat, right? <laughs> the other great part about clay is you can keep pinching it. So let's say I wanna make uh, some little impressions to show that it's a cat ear. Now I totally can do that. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a cat, it can be whatever you want, or you can just keep it as a pot with texture on it. You know, that works too. If you'd like to turn your little pinch pot into a planter, think about using your pencil and poking a hole right into the bottom. That'll give you drainage, or if you're doing succulents, you can just keep them straight like that. Now, for some of the parents out there, I know that clay is kind of irresistible. So if your little one has decided that they don't wanna make a pinch pot, they wanna make a clay cat dog, awesome. <laughs> Just keep in mind, you don't want anything thicker than your thumb or you risk it exploding in the kiln, which is not good. Um, but yeah, if you guys have little creatures that have come out of this project, please bring them back to the AHA school. I would love to fire them. The biggest thing is make sure that your name is on the bottom. Um, we're gonna be getting maybe 168 of these next week. So if you don't have your name on it, I can't guarantee it's gonna get back to you. All right. Oh, the other thing I wanted to tell you guys, um, I'm gonna clear glaze all of these and this clay will turn white in the kiln. Now let's say, you really want to glaze it. Um, I understand that draw. So I wanted to tell you guys about a product. It's called Mako Stroke and Coat Wonder Glaze. You can get it on Amazon. Um, yes, that's what it's called. Let's be adults here. Um, and they're all different kinds of colors. You can buy them in two ounce bottles. They're really great because you can paint them on before it gets fired. Typically with a clay project, it has to go through the bisque kiln, which is what we call it. It's just that first firing then you glaze it, then you fire it again in the glaze kiln. These wonder glaze um, glazes can be painted on before it goes into the kiln at first. So if you're really wanting to add some color, consider hopping on Amazon or one of these ceramics um, supply stores and look for Mako Stroke and Coat Wonder Glaze. You can paint it on here. Just don't put it on the bottom. The reason being, it will stick to our shelves and you won't get your piece back. And that's not good. <laughs> Okay, the last thing that we wanted to, or that I wanted to tell you guys, the other big tool that you need for this, wet paper towel or a baby wipe. Don't rinse your hands in your sink and let it go straight down. I mean, we're not using a whole lot of clay, so if you've already done that, you're gonna be fine. But the more we can use a wet paper towel to clean off our hands and clean off our tools before we go into our plumbing and our sinks, the happier your plumber is gonna be. <laughs> and you probably. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you. Um, before you go, I just want to say we really want to see your pots. So please post your pots on social media. Um, on Facebook, you can find us. We're at the AHA School for the Arts. On Instagram, it's AHA School Telluride. And use the hashtag Maker Moment so that we can all see what everybody did. Um, with all these pieces of clay out in the community, I would love to see our social media pages get flooded with what you guys have done. Um, it's literally my favorite thing to do looking at pottery. So, <laughs> um, And then before I sign off, the last thing I want to do is just give a huge shout out to the AHA school, my employer. I am so incredibly grateful not only to be in this town and this community, but to be working for such a great great organization. Um, when we had this idea, I kind of had it in my mind that it would be, I don't know, maybe 30 bags of clay that we would give away. And needless to say, yesterday it was <laughs> really overwhelming and so great that we had to furiously wedge things and get 168 bags of clay together. That is because of you guys and your love for creating and I'm so honored to be a part of that. Um, on that note, once we got all of that clay going, I started feeling a little guilty and thought, uh, I should donate the cost of this. So I offered that up and Judy told me, don't you dare donate. This is something that AHA wants to do for the community and I think that is so incredible and I'm honored to be a part of it. Uh, having said that, if you have the means and you wanna support this, 
please consider going onto our website. It's aha.org and hitting that donate button. No donation is too small. Five bucks, 50 bucks will help us continue these programs in the future. So if you liked what you saw today, please consider donating. If you donate a hundred bucks, you get a free t-shirt. I mean, come on. <laughs> and we'll keep the good videos coming. Um, and I know times are tough. If you don't have those extra funds, I'm not trying to give you a guilt trip here. We are so honored to be bringing this programming to you guys free of charge. So please um, consider reposting it. You know, Post it to your social media, get the word out there. Let's get more people making art during this time. Thank you all so, so much. Keep an eye out for future maker moments and um, stay safe, friends. Bye.